In the second example, let's go through and calculate our degree of unsaturation. We have 2 times the number of carbon, which is 5, plus 2 minus the number of hydrogen, which is 12. Then we subtract any halogens, add any nitrogen. We don't have those. We'll ignore the oxygen. Let's take that, divide it by 2. We end up with 12 minus 12 over 2 is 0. So you will not have any pi bonds. You will not have any rings in this molecule. Now let's go through and assign CHs to each of our signals. So the two hydrogen integration, I'll make a CH2. The one hydrogen, CH. Another one hydrogen, CH. Two hydrogen, CH2. And six hydrogen. But we can't have CH6. The most likely scenario for this will be two equivalent CH3s. It could also be three equivalent CH2s, but that's much more rare. So now that we have these pieces down, let's double check. We should have five carbons total. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So something's obviously not right. When you run into writing down too many carbons like this, what's most likely the case is that instead of a CH, you have an OH or an NH. And we do have an oxygen here. So if that's the case, look for a singlet because alcohols tend to be singlets. And we find this singlet right here, and it's also kind of broadened, which is indicative of an alcohol. So I'm going to cross that out and instead write OH. Now let's check our atoms again. We should have five carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. We're good. We need 12 hydrogen. So we have two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're good there. We need an oxygen, and we have our oxygen. So we have all of our fragments. Now let's add in dots to represent how many bonds we need each group to form. The CH2 carbon needs two more bonds. The OH oxygen needs one more bond. The CH needs three more bonds. CH2 needs two more bonds, and each methyl group needs one bond. Now let's see if we can figure out some connectivity based on the splitting. You can see things are a little messy right here, uh, where peaks tend to do some overlapping, um, but you were given the information that this CH is a multiplet, this CH2 is a quartet, so that helps a little bit. But let's start down with the CH2 on the end and see if that's a good starting point. We have a triplet. That means n plus 1 equals 3, n equals 2. Do we have a CH2 we can connect that to? Yes, we do, right here. And we only have one, so we can immediately make that connection. So that works out. The next thing we can look at might be this CH2. You could go there. You could go to the CH3s. You don't always have to move um, to a certain position to analyze. But I'm going to work with the CH2 and say it's a quartet. n plus 1 is 4. n equals 3. This should be connected to carbons with a total of three hydrogen. So you might immediately be tempted to think it needs to be connected to a CH3, but that doesn't have to be the case. We've already bonded this to a CH2. So two of the three hydrogen are accounted for. That means it needs to be connected to a carbon with one more hydrogen. And we'll connect it 
to the CH. Now that gives it um, connections to carbon with a total of three hydrogen. The last coupling we'll look at, um, I'm not going to do much with this multiple because that you can't really easily analyze. But if we look at these CH3 groups, those represent doublets. So for a doublet, n plus 1 equals 2, n equals 1. These are each connected to a carbon with one hydrogen. Since they're equivalent, they both better be connected to the same place. And we can connect each of them to this CH group. All right, we're getting really close. Now all that's left is we have a dot on the oxygen, a dot on this carbon. Since that's all that's left, we connect those together. We didn't even need to use chemical shifts in this problem to figure out our molecule. Um, but one thing I will mention here that is useful in analyzing, we have this signal here at about 3.5. That's our electronegative region. That means this carbon is likely connected to an electronegative atom. Sure enough, we ended up connecting it to the oxygen. That's the electronegative atom. Let's finish up just by redrawing the molecule. So we have the OH. That's bonded to the CH2. That's bonded to the next CH2, that's bonded to the CH, and that CH is bonded to two methyl groups. So you can draw it like that, or if you want to draw it in the more skeletal form, looks like that.